Hey, how's it going? Today I'm starting something quite different than what we normally do around this here parts. I'm starting a new series where I want to show you how I make my audio tutorials. They're all the rage these days and you may want to join in on the fun, but you're not quite sure how to do it or how to get started. Now there's about a million OBS tutorials on YouTube, but what they focus on more is video rather than audio. So in this series, I want to focus on audio and expose some of the problems that I've run into and noticed about capturing and playback of audio out of your DAW into OBS and other similar software. I'm also going to be doing it from start to finish using free software only, from capturing audio and video to importing it for editing, and how I overall go about automating a huge chunk of my editing, mixing, and exporting process. My overall goal is that I want to do these cheap and quick with minimal amount of work required in post-production after I stop shooting. I currently do three to five tutorials per week, so it's not really viable for me to spend a lot of time on the post-production part of things. In the first episode, we look at how I set up my DAW and OBS, and I'll also talk about why I have a healthy amount of distress trust in the audio I capture out of OBS. My DAW of choice and the one I teach on YouTube is Reaper. However, a lot of these principles apply to any other DAW. I have done Logic, Ableton, and Pro Tools tutorials in the past, and the same principles apply, though Reaper makes some things way easier. I also edit and mix all my tutorials, video, images, and everything else included right in Reaper, which is really not something you can do in other DAWs. I'll touch on that in future episodes, and you can go ahead and skip that if you use another software like DaVinci or whatever Adobe is peddling these days. So let's break down our problem into a few pieces. And the first thing we need to do is we need to sum somehow capture our screen and audio from our DAW into OBS. We may or may not also want to record what we're saying through a microphone or you may want to use text and we also need some kind of a camera to capture our face. In OBS we can set up a scene and place all these different elements wherever we want on our screen and then record that as a video. If you're a perfectionist or you have a fancy camera you may want to record the video from that separately and then mix them together in post-production. But again that's not my style. I want to do everything with one video capture and have all my audio and all my video in one file and that will make my editing process and exporting process much easier and I can do more tutorials as a result. So that is my personal philosophy. Now this does come with a few compromises for video, but I assure you that I make zero compromises when it comes to audio. My audio is pristine, fully customizable, and I'll show you how I set my audio up so I have full control of it in the post-production phase. This should also be your primary goal if you're making audio tutorials, because if your audio stinks, most people will probably wonder what there is to learn from you. That said, we're not going for kind of a crisp film or radio quality. Again, Again, the name of the game is to be as fast as possible and churn out as many audio tutorials as possible really quickly and with minimal work. So as long as folks understand you, we're not going to be a stickler for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to assume you have a DAW of some sort that you want to talk about, but if you haven't already, go ahead and download OBS and install it on your system. And you also need some kind of a virtual audio interface that we'll use to capture audio out of our DAW into OBS. For Mac, I would recommend using Black Hole 16 channel plugin, which is free. And for PC, there's the voice meter audio interface also free. Another great plugin for PC that you should look into is the Voxengo recorder which doesn't have a Mac equivalent and that makes a lot of things easier downstream. All of these should be pretty easy to Google but again in the blog post I will talk a little bit more about them and I'll give you a full rundown of my list, how much it costs and the pros and cons of each piece of gear, software and hardware that I use to make my tutorials. So all right enough yapping let's get into OBS. Okay so here we are in my tutorial editing template. Let's go to OBS and here we are. There's me Vice, hello. This is the scene that I normally use. Now in OBS, we can create scenes and each scene can have as many sources as you want. So let's look at my scene. I have my video capture device, that's the webcam. I can show it or hide it. For now, let's hide it. This is my mic, hello, hello. And you can see the meters here. This is the DAW source. So let's again switch back to the DAW and I'll play a little song here. And the audio is coming through here. And finally, this is my display capture, which I can again turn on and off. So let's make a scene from scratch. Down here to scenes, and I'm going to click on this plus sign, and I'll call it audio tutorial, and hit OK. And now we have a blank scene because there are no sources. So here I can click on the plus sign and add any sources I want. So let's first bring in our screen. I can go to display capture, can create a new one, and hit OK. And here if you have multiple displays, you can select them from here. I have only one. And you can also crop it to any window that you want, or you can crop it manually. So if you crop the window, I can, for example, come here and select any window. I can select for example, Reaper, and now it's only showing Reaper to me. However, I like to keep this to none 
because I want to show my whole screen. I want my audience to see what I see. And for example, what you can see is if I put it on Reaper, there's a bit missing from the bottom of my screen. And overall, I may want to suddenly switch to Mozilla Firefox and show that to my viewers. So I just keep that to none, but that's up to you. You are after all the chief editorial of your tutorial, but also we can always crop it manually if we want. So as you can see, I got these squares here and with these squares, I can resize this. And if I hold Alt, I start cropping and these walls turn green, indicating that there's some picture cropped. And when they're red, that means that it's full size. Now for audio sources, what I like to do is go to my settings, go to audio. And here I have my mic auxiliary audio to my audio interface. And that's where my mic is plugged in. And my secondary auxiliary audio is black hole 16 channels, which is my virtual interface. So all I got to do now is go audio input capture and I will choose my mic aux and that's my microphone. And I would also choose the second one, which is my DAW. And finally, optionally, if you want to bring in your webcam, you can go to video capture device, hit OK and bring in your device. And there's me face. So I can make this smaller, obviously, but also I don't want to make it too small. What I can do is this instead crop some. I like to put myself on the very corner of the shot because I kind of know like what my bounds are, like how low or how high I can go. So I put that down here. Now I can make it a bit smaller. Now that we have our scene set up, we can just start recording and we'll be recording a video. But before I start recording, let me also show you some settings here. So I'm not going to go through all the settings, but whatever is relevant, I'll go through. I like to show a confirmation dialog when I start streams, so I don't suddenly start streams. For now, let's not look at streams. In output mode, I'm in advanced and here in recording. I record in MKV for multiple reasons and I'm recording three tracks and I'll tell you why in a second. And I want my bitrate to be constant at 2500 kilobits and my audio bit rates are at 960. So we're all set here. Let's go to audio. My sample rate is 48k. I have my channels 2.1 and I'll tell you why in a second. This is not the classic 2.1 meaning stereo plus a subwoofer. This is just so I can get my mic on a separate channel than the stereo feed on my DAW. And in video, I'm just in 19, 20, 10, 80. And here you can add hotkeys and in advance, you can do a bunch of advanced color grading stuff. None of this is currently relevant to us. So I'll just hit okay. And in my system, I have the stereo feed from my DAW going out from black hole into OBS. And I'm additionally just recording the track three of my interface. And that goes to the track three of my audio. And hence why I'm using a 2.1. I'm using three channels. Channel one and two are the left and right of my stereo feed. And then channel three is my microphone. So that's awesome. To set that up, you got to actually right click on this gear button here, go to advanced audio properties. And from here, we're doing a few things. Um, the first thing is I'm turning my DAW audio 6 dB down. And again, I'll show you why I do this in a second. For my mic, I have monitoring off because I can monitor through my interface. My interface has a monitoring option. So I just turn that on and I'm hearing it without any delay. And then for the black hole, since we now set the outputs to black hole and my headphones are plugged into my interface, we can just go to audio monitoring and I can monitor and output my audio, meaning whatever sound comes out of my DAW goes into OBS and OBS sends it right back to the interface that I have selected here, which is my Zoom L2 driver. So that's awesome. So let's just record a scene start hello how you doing welcome to my bullshit tutorials let's hear some audio fantastic stop it now i can go to my finder and i'm gonna just drag this in here and put it on my footage so this is our video and as you can see i have my three tracks and track one is my microphone feed and this is my DAW feed and we can listen to it start hello how you doing welcome to my bullshit tutorials let's hear some audio fantastic and that's our video. And the way I set this up that it plays immediately is that I have some routing. So my audio three goes to my voiceover chain. But anyway, let's not jump ahead. We'll get to those all in due time. Okay, so here are some things you shouldn't do in my opinion. First thing is a lot of people, when they wanna make a tutorial and they're in a project, let's say this is a mixing project with multiple tracks, what they do is is that they change their audio device to their main one, whatever it is, create a new recording track, set it to my microphone, turn the monitoring on, and now I'm recording audio. I don't like this approach for multiple reasons. The first reason is this has a bit of latency. So something I can do is come here and change my buffer size from 1024 to like 128, and that will reduce the latency 
latency. But the problem is if I'm teaching mixing and I have a bunch of tracks and a bunch of plugins running, then in the end, I do have to come here and change my buffer size to a higher amount and that causes latency. And the second reason is sometimes I use monitoring effects, right? And if I use monitoring effects and my monitor is on, well, I'm hearing whatever I'm saying in the recording and there's all these noise even when I'm not saying anything. And all this noise gets just baked into your stereo file. And that's not something you want because you're teaching mixing and you should want to teach mixing with a pristine audio and any amount of noise, even if it's negligible, is something you should try to avoid. So for these reasons, I don't like to have just my mic feed into my actual project and then I can't use my monitoring effects and I have latency. So that blows. But other than this, I'm gonna run a little test here. And for this, I'm gonna stop my recording and start another one in a second. Okay, so what you just saw me do is run a few audio tests. This is a video that we just recorded. So this audio file, as you heard, was four clicks of metronome plus a 220 hertz sine wave for five seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna align these clicks to each other, and we're gonna run what is called a null test. So a null test has many applications, but one of them is to test if the destination file in a recording is the same as its source. So theoretically, if the audio capture of the sine wave I just did with OBS is exactly the same as the sine wave, then if I align the audio files and flip the phase on one of them, they should cancel out completely and I should hear nothing come out the master track. So let's align them perfectly. And that looks about right to me. And as you can see, they cancel each other out, but not really completely. So the sine tone is gone, but somehow the metronome itself wasn't gone. And this was the first recording we did when my settings were at minus three. Then I switched it to zero. And with the second video, if I do the same thing, and if I play the file, you can see that they did not cancel each other out. Let's also get rid of my audio because there's a little bit of noise in my... And if we check, you can see that at zero, they don't cancel each other out. And it's easy to see from the mixer because if I play this, you can see that this is a little bit louder. So why the volume discrepancy with OBS? The reason for that is that OBS by default has a different pan law. In Reaper, I use the pan law of minus three dB. So I'd have to adjust that for OBS because I don't know of a way of changing the pan law in OBS. And if you use different DAWs or you don't know your pan law or if your DAW uses a different pan law or whatever you're teaching isn't allowing you to do it, you just gotta run some tests with OBS, create something like this, align it, flip the phase, do a test. After a while, you'll understand what volume you should set this to so that they hear roughly the same loudness as what you're hearing. And this may seem really complicated and like a lot of steps, but again, we're teaching audio. So it's our obligation to make sure our audio is as optimized as possible. But we still have a problem. And our problem is while the noise canceled itself out, the clicks are still somewhat audible. And that's somewhat of a problem. And that means that whatever you're capturing out of OBS using a virtual audio interface, and I tested this with Soundflower and Black Hole, and I've gone to OBS and I've tried all kinds of different recording video formats, all kinds of different recording audio formats. All of these are grayed out because we're shooting a video right now. And I don't want to waste your time right now, but I also ran this test with a white noise and other songs. And the same thing, I could never get whatever I got out of OBS to completely cancel out in a non test. Even when it's minus three, again, the sine wave goes away, but the metronome doesn't go away. And if I do it with pink noise, it doesn't completely cancel itself out. The audio is not the same. So what does this mean? So if I'm teaching anything like mixing or something, I just can't rely on OBS to exactly and accurately capture my sound. So I teach a DAW. So most of what I teach are not about mixing. I'm, you know, I'm trying to show you how to set up a MIDI controller, how to sidechain, how to customize your menus and so on and so forth. For my normal DAW tutorials, this system works. If I ever want to make sure that I'm recording really exactly the same thing. I want to output exactly the same audio that I heard in my DAW to my users when I'm teaching compression or EQ or something like that. I just go and use this option, which is in file, save live output to disk or bounce. And 
this may exist in other DAWs. I don't think it does. At least in Pro Tools, it doesn't. And in Logic, it doesn't. They have a feature called Bounce, but it doesn't work exactly like this. All the settings are as you would expect it. It goes to the same directory. It records WAV at stereo. And I will untick all these boxes and I hit start. And now basically Reaper is recording whatever happens in the DAW. So right now it's just recording silence because again, you're hearing my microphone from another feed. But if I play, and for example, I stop it and I play again, I can come here and I can stop it. It says live output saving completed. And here's our file. And if I bring it in, you can see that it recorded basically everything that happened within the DAW. So at the beginning, when I was explaining, it's just silence. And then I played it twice and recorded it twice with the amount of gap in the middle. So it's essentially recording a live output of my DAW. I can't have a track running in the DAW as I mix because that won't do the same thing. If I pause it, it will pause the recording. So this way, when I'm doing tutorials, if I'm doing anything about mixing, I will run it against this feed. And this, if you align it, will completely 100% cancel out because it's the exact same audio. So you can see, nothing, not a zilch. So if I'm recording a video, I would, you know, record it through OBS the same way, including the audio. And then I would do another output capture bounce from Reaper. If you don't use Reaper, you can also do the same thing from QuickTime by going to file and new audio recording. And then I'll try to align the recording perfectly. And then I would just go ahead and get rid of my stereo feed from my OBS. So I just get my voiceover and visuals from what I captured on OBS and I replace the DAW output to OBS with this audio file. So that's it. All right, so that was it for this episode. I hope you learned a ton. As you can see, setting up may take a bit of time, but once you're set up, you're basically good forever and you can bang out tutorials in no time. Also running null tests is important, especially again, if you're teaching mixing or mastering or something like that. So make sure to take the time and run those tests and make sure you're outputting audio correctly into OBS. In the blog post, I'll go over some of the stuff I glazed over in this episode, as well as relevant links and more. So make sure to check that out. Please subscribe to my channel to stay up to date for the next tutorials and share this video with your audio nerd friends. If you like the work I do, you can also donate through me through the link above, link in description. In the next episode, we'll do a mock tutorial and then I'll import it into Reaper and I'll talk about my tutorial editing template and some cool tricks that I use to automate certain tasks. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.